So far we have focused on one kind of topological problem or question and while that's very important here it's not typical in a more general context. The extension problem is a little more typical. So in the extension problem is the following thing that we have a func space x, we have a subspace a contained in x and then we have a function from a to another space y. Okay, so I'll put it in a commutative di diagram. So we have a here, we have x, and we have a function, as I said, this is the inclusion. Here's y, here's the function f, and the question is, can we extend this to the cap function capital F from x to y? Okay, so a typical example of this would be when we take um, both a and y to be n minus one sphere, and x to be the uh, end ball. Okay, so I have a disk, I fill it in, and I have a circle, this one's unfilled, I have a map f on the boundary, and you can see you can't extend it. And the point of algebraic topology is to be able to show that you can't extend things in this manner. Okay, and, and so how we, the way we will show it is if we apply functor, so functor Suppose we have f from topological space to anything, some other category, so you get extension problem, so gives extension problem in. Extension problem in C. And of course, if you have a solution to the original problem, you map it, you get a solution to the extension problem, so you can draw conclusions one way. This is very similar to what we do in the case of the lifting problem. And we'll revisit them both together. But first we'll see what is sometimes considered the most fundamental problem in topology. So sometimes you would say that the most fundamental question in topology is given two spaces x and y are x and y homeomorphic. Okay, so let's put x and y here. Now how does one even formulate this in terms of uh, commutative diagrams? You have to think a little bit, but what we want is a map from x to y, we'll call this f, and we want a map from y to x, we can call it g. And by the way, in general, you may want several commutative diagrams, but here we can do it with just one. And we need f composed with g is the identity, so that let's put a little loop here and call this identity on x. Okay, so this, so this. Uh, that was bad notation. Let me make identity of x with x as a subscript. And similarly, we have a loop here. And this is the identity of y. Okay. So the question is whether f and g exist so that this commutes. This is of a similar nature to the previous questions, but we have two unknown maps. Okay. So, so suppose we have a functor. So suppose we are given a functor f from topological spaces to let's say for definiteness a group then if x and y are homeomorphic homeomorphic so we get what do we get we get a solution to the following i have f of x here which is a group I have f of y here, which is a group. I have the identity map on f of y. That's the image of the functor. And I have the identity map on f of x. Right? And then I have to solve these two. And if I have a homeomorphism, I have phi and I have psi. And if I take this as f of f, and c as f of g okay so that is what we conclude is that these groups f of x is isomorphic to f of y so homeomorphism is a special case of isomorphism and what we see is homeomorphic spaces if i apply a functor then i get isomorphic objects which are again so in some sense isomorphic spaces give isomorphic objects okay there's a slightly indirect but not very uh, surprising use and so it's telling you functors give you in particular invariants but functors are much better than just invariants okay. and now we'll turn to another problem where we deal with things in a way that is much more indirect 
Okay, so the fixed point problem asks that if we are given a function from x to x, is there a point which is fixed, which is taken to itself? So you want to show there always exists a fixed point. Well, how will uh, we approach this? this is not categorical clearly. It's not just in terms of functions and there is this equality sitting here. Okay, so if we look at this, there is an equality sitting here. This is not just in terms of functions and morphisms. So we will actually use constructions of spaces that are not categorical. So let's reformulate this. Okay, so we don't reformulate this. So we reformulate and ask in some sense a different question whose answer will imply the answer. Namely, we'll do something rather simple. We will simply negate this question. So given means, of course, for all. So we are asking is for every continuous function, is there, must there be a fixed point? Is there some hypothesis on the space? So we'll reverse this and ask, is there a function without fixed points? Well, how does this help us? Well, this helps us in a certain way. Namely, we have things that we can do with functions, that is, we can construct their graph. Okay, so we want to know what the graph of a function, so, so which we have, and we also have in the spaces a diagonal. Okay, so let's look at a function x. Okay, and we have x itself, and we have f here. Okay, <coughs> so now in general, if I look at the graph of a function, well, it satisfies the following commutative diagram, right? So, so graph of f we'll call gamma of f. Then you see we have x cross x. We have a product. And this is true for any pair of spaces. So we have x cross x. If I look at gamma of f, no, I'm sorry, not f of f, but gamma of f, the graph of the function. And it, it maps a point x to, so the point x, of course, goes to the point x comma f of x. And the property that it's a graph precisely says that if I project it r to the second coordinate, then we will get f of x. Well, that is what this thing commuting says. And we also need the fact that it's a graph. So let's project it to the first coordinate, p1 to x. <coughs> and the result that we get here is if we are projecting onto the first coordinate, then this guy must be the identity. Okay, so let's do this a little more cleanly. So more cleanly, we can characterize a graph in terms of commutative diagrams. Okay, and it's actually easier to do it in a slightly more general context, so we won't end up mixing up uh, domains and codomains. So let's look at this guy. So we have x, we have y, and we have a function from x to y. Okay, and the graph, remember, is some function. So we'll define that function as gamma of f. It will take x to uh, the pair x and f of x. Okay, so that guy sits in x cross y. Okay. Now x cross y maps to both x and to y. It has the first projection which will map to x and it has the second projection which will map to y. Okay. And what we have is the graph goes from here to here. And we have our first projection, so this is p1 and this is p2. This is the function f. So what we have is that this diagram commutes and the graph is characterized by this. It's a map with the property that if I go to x, y and then drop to p1, I get x. And I go to x, y and drop y, p2, then I get an element y. Oh, of course I didn't specify this. So this has to be the identity in x. Okay, so this is a good warm up. So we want to describe whether it's a function without fixed points. Okay, and a function without fixed points it can be characterized in terms of its graph using the diagonal. Okay, so let me just write down the diagonal here and then we will see what the commutative diagram is for a function without fixed points. So diagonal is just pairs xx and uh, uh, not capital X, little x belongs to x. So let's formulate a function being fixed point free. Okay, 
uh, and the way we'll do it is we'll take the function and its graphs as being unknown but having a certain relation and then we'll throw in being fixed point free so we are looking for a function f from x to x okay this is a graph so it goes to x cross x and the graph is another function called phi i'll change it very slightly in a moment okay and then i have the second projection from here which is p2 okay and let me put it in this direction to avoid crowding if i look at the first projection p1 and i look at the identity function okay so we get a condition for phi being the graph of a function f of course here f could be the identity and phi is the graph of the identity actually sitting on the diagonal okay but what we want to say is it's fixed point free and the way in which we can say it's fixed point free is by taking the complement of the diagonal x cross x minus the diagonal or if you wish you could make it factor through but you are really just restricting the map so there's no problem so you have a function with the graph being disjoint from the diagonal and that's what it means to be fixed point free so as you see we have to do things in an indirect way in uh, mapping firstly replacing the function by the graph we couldn't write it and then looking at the image of the graph and we had to capture the relation but still we can convert the whole thing into a functorial thing so this is a very useful way especially in left shift fixed point theory and so on to formulate things though often we show fixed point free uh, ex uh, free functions don't exist by contradiction indirectly but if you want to understand it directly this shows how we can often formulate topological problems in a largely categorical way i am saying this largely because of the following fact that is to say we have this this operation here set complements okay now the rest of the operations including products and graphs if you wish if you define graphs in this way can be written in any category you can define them at least in any category it's interesting how you would define products but you can okay they may not exist but complements are uh, not something that exist at a categorical level like the complement of a group doesn't have much meaning uh, and complement of a vector space i don't mean an inner product space but just a vector space there is no uh, you have to make arbitrary choices and hence that will not behave well as far as categories are concerned so all these put together will tell you that this construction is not uh, fully categorical and so what you can't do is apply functor blindly instead you apply the functor to this okay that is to say we can apply f if we have a functor f okay and then i'll get f of x cross x uh, minus diagonal and then this goes to f of x and then etc everything else is the same but the thing is this minus part doesn't factorize in any way so it's not that you all your operationals are categorical but still this is another way illustrating what is a topological problem and how you would formulate it in the kind of language that will let you uh, use algebraic topology